Are you tired of watching shows that only give you general social media theory and expect you to figure out how to apply it to your own industry? Join us for this week's episode of Social Chatter, the industry's longest running social media marketing news talk show. Not only will you learn the latest breaking news, but you'll also gain practical advice on how to apply it. Now here's your host, Christian Karasevich. Welcome everyone to episode 272 of my weekly social media marketing talk show. Uh, I've been doing this for quite a few years and I love doing it. There's always something exciting going on uh, in social media each and every week. In particular, this week, we're going to be talking about, um, let's see, we're going to talk uh, Twitter verification in 2021. We're going to be talking about, um, what else we got? A little YouTube shorts action. Um, we've got some updates to Instagram reels and stories. Uh, Jim and I are also going to be talking about a new tool or I'll say tool, actually a new app that's out. Well, I don't even say if it's new cause it's not really new. It's been out for a few years. Um, it's called clubhouse. You know, we're going to just talk if, you know, if there are any merits for you as a business owner, if you should use it. Uh, and we've also got some great tools we want to share with you in what is essentially our last episode of 2020. I know a lot of people are excited to, um, I think a lot of people are excited for 2021 and, and you know, what it brings or should bring hopefully. Uh, but I'm going to go and bring on Jim. Jim, fantastic having you back for uh, what is uh, the last episode of 2021. Thanks for joining. Yeah. And uh, happy New Year's Eve to everyone. I, I'm hopefully uh, it will be a happier year, but we know it's not going to be right away. Uh, it was a lot of fun to uh, get our latest uh, launch your live episode out with uh, Marco Novo talking about uh, how to find guests for your for your live shows and Good to see uh, our friend Tim uh, checking in. Tim, uh, hope you're enjoying some Dunkin' Donuts. Co- I think you're having maple donuts coffee. So I'll, I'll be curious how that how that tastes. And um, but yeah, I, I think uh, we got some great topics to talk about. And uh, of course, I I kind of laugh now because you know you've got this stick of dynamite next to you now. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, so here's here's I'll, I'll tell people what this is. You know, so we uh, by the way, how does the audio sound? It sounds a little loud to me, but. It- no, you sound you sound good. You, you, I think you finally have uh, discovered okay. whatever that gremlin was. So it sounds so good. Here's the one thing to know about um, just audio in general. So uh, you can't just go. So you can't just go buy a microphone and, for example, buy an audio mixer um, or a, a mixing board and whatnot. Like you can, but you may run into some initial challenges with it. And that's what I've had with the Shure SM7B mic that I use when I used it with my roadcaster pro and the funny thing is there's people that use the same equipment they don't have this at, at all uh, but in my case i do need to have this dynamite stick and basically what this does is and hopefully this doesn't get flagged by the way <laughs> um so what this basically does is it increases the the gain so like this mic needs a lot of power and so what this does is it gives me like 20 something plus decibel and so it gives me the power that I need to be able to run it through my mixer. So that's basically what it does. And it helps clean things up and make sure it sounds good and whatnot. So that's what that is. So glad we actually have it fixed. Um, yeah. Okay. So Jim, I know we have a lot of topics to talk about this week. Uh, where do you want to start? Um, Cause like we said, we have quite a few to discuss. Do you, do you want to start with uh, Twitter verification? Sure. What's going on here? What do we got? Yeah. So, so I, you know, it's been a little while since uh, Twitter had a verification, the uh, famous or infamous blue check. And so they stopped doing it. And so they're actually starting actually next month, which is tomorrow uh, mm-hmm. sometime. Uh, they're going to start to allow people to apply for verification again. Um, right. I, I, I was never a verified account uh, before. I never had put in, I think it maybe when I, you know, thought maybe I had enough people for them to give me a verification. It was like, well, can't get it now. Um, So I I think it's, it's good in a way because it's kind of like you want to make sure you're dealing with the real person or business. Uh, I I think that's always been an issue with a lot of these social media sites. I mean, even now, right. As an example, your Instagram account, you know, could get hacked. I mean, literally somebody will scrape your picture Mm-hmm. use the same name and have a slight change in the the handle and then they'll be sending you a message or a friend request it's like well wait a minute 
I thought mm-hmm. I was already friends with Christian. Um, so I, I think this is good. I, I don't know in some aspects why they make it uh, so difficult um, to do that. Uh oh. And nope. um, yeah. I, I, was, I wondered where we went. I was like, what? <laughs> no, we're, we're here, actually. I'm just playing with uh, some of the new oh, views. Oh, okay. You're playing with some of the new stuff. All right. I decided to well, solo you told- the image. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. StreamYard's coming out with some nice new, uh, nice new features. So, but yeah. So that's, that's, uh, you know, to me in a nutshell, kind of what it's about. So I think it's, um, you know, like it says, large audio- audience are notable, you know, government, whatever. So, um, so you're going to have to build your following to get that verification. And I could see where, you know, maybe some of these companies that want to work with, uh, you know, people of, of, we'll call it people of influence. I know we kind of say that tongue in cheek sometimes because <laughs> apparently I'm an Amazon influencer and I just kind of laugh at that title. Um, but this might be what they're looking for if they're going to work with a brand or, or individual uh, type of thing. Very possible. Now, I, I will say this. One thing that really stands out to me for the Twitter verification process. So I know before when the verification process was around, you and I always questioned this because there were people that would get a verification and we didn't really understand how those people actually even had a verification or why they even had one. Because to us, they really weren't even influential. I mean, you know what I mean, Jim? Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, there, there's people that, you know, like uh, they'd have a, maybe a few thousand followers at the most and somehow they had verified a verified account. And so uh, what really stood out to me here, though, is the fact that with Twitter verification, Twitter can actually take your verification away with the 2021 requirements. Mm. Now, that's the part I think is really uh, pretty uh, fascinating with this. I mean, because a lot of people, they, they rush to get this Twitter verification, but then now that you have it, you know, they do want you to have some of the basic things like, uh, for example, you know, they, they want you to have a complete profile. Um, so they define what that means. So, you know, it no longer requires a profile bio or header image, no big deal. Um, they've updated the references to Wikipedia for better alignment with the encyclopedia's published standards. So, uh, for notability and audio or article quality, um, they've also started changing some of the categories. So like news is also now broken into news and journalists. So like there's not too many categories, for example. Um, and then the other thing, though, is, um, you know, the, the minimum follower account requirement on a per country basis. So they've updated to be on a per region basis to make the follower account requirements less susceptible to spam and more equitable across geographies. But then, as I mentioned, they can take away the verification if you're not doing things. And these include things like verifying the email address or the phone number on the account, having a profile image and having a display name. So. I think I think it's actually pretty fascinating that they could theoretically take it away from somebody because I think they should do that for a lot of these accounts. Like there's accounts right. that are verified that you really like. I what's your definition of I guess verified, Jim? Who should be verified? Should everyone be able um, to get verified? I I would I would say I look at verified from a different perspective. I look at verified is like this is we, it's it's almost like we've received enough information. It's kind of like when you uh you know try to get uh you know voting or whatever like we've seen their id they've proved that they live where they live so this is really that person as opposed to um you know an account could be verified but it's like is it really a person i I mean i think um some brands do a really good job you know agora pulse as an example that when they're tweeting they will actually say who that individual from the company that's tweeting on behalf of the company because a lot of times with a brand you really don't know who it is it's just the brand so uh i I look at it more like is this really who they say they are or or someone uh you know fake uh yeah great to see uh miss eileen and uh you know uh chris stone from cast ahead is is Mm -hmm. in the audience as well so uh Great to see everyone on on New Year's Eve. And uh, what are your guys' plans? You got anything big planned or is everyone just staying inside? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, not a whole lot on my end. But yeah, I mean, I I think this is a fascinating move. I mean, by Twitter, I I liked it. They're reopening it. Um, I think that at the same time, they need to like part of it. I want to say is like people should like, I don't know if even the verif like I look at verification as like, hey, I open an account. And I need to verify that I'm actually that person, but that doesn't necessarily need to be 
equated to a check mark. I think. Does that make sense? Or well, well, I, it it does, but approach. but at, yeah, but you'll see. Like I, I'll see people that will, especially like in sports, people will you know maybe sometimes they're able to grab, uh, you know, a handle, yeah, that's similar to the official team, mm -hmm. and then you know because that's the whole thing with the with the Twitter naming convention of your profile like sure you might have you know as an example you're at social chefs right. and i but i could create a title that would say social chefs right right and yeah. i unless i'm paying attention to the handle i may not realize like well wait a minute this isn't that social chefs it's some other social yeah. chef so i so that's where i i see the check mark being important because then it's like oh, okay i'm really tweeting with the official uh, organization and not someone that's maybe you know because because unfortunately there's still need to do some cracking down on bots and fake accounts so uh, right yeah that, that's where i think it's maybe a bigger a bigger deal yeah and i mean here's the thing if i'm a business so um let's quickly talk about you know if i'm a business so uh for example i mean you know verifications it's important i think in the sense that well, to your point, it shows that somebody's actually gone through the steps. And then you do need to take that a step further and say, hey, you know, is this an actual real account? Is this a bot? Um, if it is, for example, then that's where they need to like clean that part up as well. Because I think I I honestly think that every account should have a verified check mark. Like you, you know what I mean? Like it it it's two different angles, I guess. Is it verified because hey, this is an official person, like this is a, a public right. a, a real public figure. Right. You know, like for example, influencers, I don't really consider influencers, influencers aren't public figures. You know, I look at public figures as like somebody who is easily impersonated, whether it's a celebrity, yeah. a government official, uh, a news source, for example, um, right. a sports team, things like that. I, I, that's what I look at it as like, what a, you know, what a verified account should be. But at the same mm -hmm. time, a verified account also could just be like, Hey, maybe, maybe they need to change this wording a little bit differently. <laughs> You know, a verified account also could be um, I've gone through the steps needed to actually verify my account with Twitter. So, you know, you're actually talking with an official person, per se. Well, well, and what's interesting, because I, I know uh, I think Facebook has kind of changed how they were doing it or, or, or yeah. stopped doing it. You know, I, I think my business page at one point was verified. Now, I don't know if, if it's allowed to be verified. And, you know, so there's in some aspects and um Chris and I have even seen this with uh, with some other stuff we're working on. These companies are always like changing the rules as they go along, and right. um, you know, I think I think we all would just appreciate consistency. And I, I think to your point, you know, maybe by being quote unquote verified, you get access to certain features that you don't if you're not verified, uh, because maybe some people don't want to go through that process. I think people feel you know almost sometimes violated when they're asked for all this personal information especially when you look at the current history of some of these social platforms when it comes to uh you know just data sharing in general even even though in the fine print you basically have said you are allowing them to have access to all this information definitely you know and just a couple of quick points here and then we're going to move on to the next topic and it's the fact that um so as I mentioned, to get Twitter for how to get verified on Twitter in 2021. So uh, for starters, you need to have a verified email address or phone number. So if you're a business and obviously you should have an email address, but if you don't have a phone number for your business that's separate from your business versus your personal account, you can easily go set something up. I know like Google Voice has those and there's plenty of other ones out there. You need to have a profile image. So that's a no brainer. Use your logo. You know, if you don't have, if you don't have another photo you can use, um, and then a display name, very simple, put your business name in there. Or if you're your business, put a separate, a different kind of photo. Maybe it could be like, uh, for example, like let's say Jem, you and I were like my photo. One could be, Hey, this is the business side. And then, you know, maybe Jem's wearing a Hawaiian shirt or something like that. And that could be his personal account or something like that. If he happens to be right. his business as well. Um, but also just keep in mind that Twitter can take the verification badge away if you don't meet their requirements or they determine that your account doesn't need to be a verified account. Um, and they, they're not going to just do that. They are going to give you an automated email and an in-app notification. So if you're using Twitter, make sure you're using the Twitter app. 
um, and then just follow whatever the requirements are. And that has to be done, by the way, you have a few weeks before January 20th, 2021. Um, so it won't lose its badge, but then after that, they, you know, at that point they could make some changes, but I think this is a, a really good idea. I mean, if I'm a business again, I mean, just do the, the standard things, get your account up, you know, do all the basic profile information. You know, that's like step one of like many steps, obviously, Jem, you know, with social media, get that basic account set up so you don't have to worry about it and then start to actually use the account. Okay. Right. So uh, what's next, Jem? Where do we go from here? I mean, we talked. Yep. Let's uh, let's let's talk about Instagram. They've come out with some uh, new uh, creative tools and reels and stories. I, I mean, because really, I think uh, in some aspects, you know, if you want to talk about, you know, things in 2020 that really grew a lot across all platforms, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, one in a sense with uh, YouTube a little bit later. But but stories in general, right? You know, LinkedIn now has stories. Twitter's calls theirs fleets. Uh, and Instagram, you know, and then TikTok was exploded so much, you know, it, it's kind of like when you think of what happened with Snapchat, right? Snapchat had come out with their process, which really is what evolved into stories with Instagram because the stuff disappears in 24 hours. And when Instagram did that, and this was, I think, before they were acquired by Facebook, it really like change the, the, you know, the game in a sense for Snap. I mean, there's still Snapchat users, but, yeah. you know, most people are like, well, I'm already on this platform. Why do I want to go learn another one? So, um, so, you know, they're just, this I think is part of the TikTok in Instagram's eyes, competitive battlefield is, you know, definitely a, a threat in their eyes. So that's like, we got to add more features to get creators to either stay or come back to the platform. So they, uh, you know, according to Matt Navarra, you know, uh, they, they've got some new things coming out. Um, you know, th there's an audio mix and, a, and voice over options uh, it, potentially in your Reels composition tools. And then you could add audio tracks, whether by voice or music clip uh, and audio level controls to further edit. Um, yeah. And but like they said, TikTok already had this functionality, mm -hmm. so uh, I, I think it's fascinating. But I think I think also uh, for me, and when I was having we were having this conversation with some folks yesterday. Yeah. I mean, like even what we do here, what we do with Launch Your Live, uh, mm -hmm. you know, other shows that we're parts of, um, we're more into long form content, right. and so I think the challenge is what do I do when it comes to short form content? And, uh, you know, like I heard somebody say, you know, I'm more of an educational type company. I, you know, like we're doing here, we're educating people about features. Can I really see that, say that in 60 seconds or less mm -hmm. and make it effective or by making multiple clips, it, you know, it's like, is it really, it kind of goes back to, you know, a phrase I like to use sometimes is, is the juice worth the squeeze? Right. No, that's and, uh, you know, so I, I, I think um, I, I think that I mean, I think it's some great stuff, but I think, you know, I haven't checked mine uh, in the past couple of days. But like, I just wanted to have music on my reels for my business. They gave mm -hmm. it to me on my personal or quote unquote creator account. But it's like I would have probably had a lot more fun with it and maybe done a few more reels if I could use music on my uh, business account. Now, maybe maybe these this ability to add music clips if it's on my business account maybe i'll revisit that but uh i don't know about you christian but i feel like the feed and instagram has become much less of a place where people focus because people are like they're consuming the stories i don't know if they're consuming the reels as much right but i think it's kind of like any new feature they're serving it up for people to uh to see because that's what they want people to do Definitely. And um, the other thing I think that is a really key point to the, the reels creative to the reels and stories, creative tools. And, and this is probably my, I think my favorite part that they're adding. It's the fact that they're adding a reels watermark and the, re and I don't say favorite. I mean, I guess the reason I like, cause here's the thing, you know, that whatever feature TikTok's going to add anyone who's using or Instagram is going to copy it or Snapchat or any of the services, it doesn't matter. Cause here's the thing. It's not unique to TikTok. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's sort of unique for that fleeting moment, but 
it's not unique in the sense that like TikTok doesn't own that functionality. So I like the fact that they're potentially that they're doing that, but then I like the fact that they are adding this watermark. And the reason I like that is because here's what most people will do. They will take their content that's on TikTok and they're going to port it over to Instagram reels because they think that like, using the same content on the same platform or on different platforms makes the most sense. And it's like, no, it doesn't. You want to make sure that whatever you're sharing is unique um, as much as you can make it. Mm -hmm. So I like the fact that they're adding that. Um, it also makes me wonder, I'm just, just a thought here, but could this be a potential uh, monetization play at, at um, a play here at work? So, Oh, no, no, no doubt in my mind. I mean, it, let's not kid ourselves. You know, this is part of the, the Facebook ecosystem, it's all about monetization with them. Nothing is, old, you know, they're, they're not they're not altruistic where they're trying to help people, you know, gain traction on their businesses for free. Now, what I will say that they do that a lot of people tend to not listen to, it's kind of like when they say, hey, here's a new feature you really think you should use, you know, as an example, when live videos started or communities, if you do that stuff, you get more eyes on it. But if you try to fight it, it's like, no, I'm just going to do things the way I've always done it. And then you wonder why you're not getting new, uh, you know, the same amount of views that you used to. I mean, I will say that they, they kind of tell you, this is what we like. This is what we want to see people do. If you do it, you get more, you get more views. You know, and um, I, I think that this is a good move, I think, by obviously by Instagram. I mean, they have to keep moving things ahead, you know, and, mm -hmm. and so don't, don't, don't get mad if like, Oh, Hey, this feature was unique to some of your platforms and now it's on other ones, you know, like it's, it's evolving the platform, keeping, trying to keep people on, uh, for example, on, on Instagram or to get them to use reels or stories or whatnot. So, um, I think, you know, overall, I think this is a good move. Um, is there anything else you want to add about this, Jim? No, I just think, you know, make sure you keep your app updated. And in some cases, maybe you have to make sure you start using the features to get that additional functionality. So because um, I because it seems like we're that that's another thing I find interesting is we're not always in a sense on a level playing field, at least from what I've seen in some of these apps. It's like some people will get the function, some people won't. And uh, I think it's a little unfortunate. I think everybody should be on a level playing field. Exactly. And, uh, you know, a couple other features, by the way, that are also there. So um, there's also uh, an edit clips option within Reels that's going to give users the uh, specific capacity to change the ele uh, each element. Um, and then in addition to that, they're also uh, working. Some users have uh, a stories feature where they can do a camera booth mode, basically where it takes uh, several shots in sequence. So definitely something else worth checking out. But um, again, I mean, it's about playing with the platform, you know, finding what works. I mean, Instagram reels, it's, it's sort of new, you know, and it, it, I say it's sort of new because it does take people, you know, if I'm a business, it takes me a little while to get up to speed on how this can actually be useful for me. And, you know, for reels, if you're not used to using it, um, follow some of your favorite brands and see how they are using or follow your competitors, look at what they're doing, you know, and get, you have to get creative. And here's the thing. It, it's no longer an excuse that you don't have the tools. That's the one thing. Uh, a lot of these uh, platforms now, they're making it super easy for you to be able to do these things. For example, the camera booth mode, it's literally just a piece of software that, you know, you hit that button, it's a feature and it runs that script and it says, Hey, take five photos or however many it is. And previously, if you wanted to do something like that, you want to make creative, you had to use a bunch of other apps and things like that. So they're baking a lot of that in. So pretty neat, uh, pretty useful. So, okay, Jen, we talked Twitter verification in 2021. We talked about new Instagram reels, creative tools. What's next? Let's talk talk for just a couple moments about this Instagram light. Um, I, I thought that was interesting. They're testing it in India because uh, this is something I had not thought of. And I guess they've also done it with Facebook. But it's what they r literally mean by light is it's a very uh, low we'll call it uh, size wise app. I think two megabytes is what I think I read uh, that allows you to run the app in, you know, some of these third world countries where they don't have a lot of bandwidth and they're just trying to make it easier for people to use their, their product. And so I thought that was interesting 
uh, that they are doing this. Uh, you know, I guess they were using it before, then they kind of shut it down. Now they're they're kind of bringing it back. Uh, maybe maybe they got a lot of demand. So I think I just think that's something that we don't always think about because you know, like me, you know, I have an iPhone 11, you know, Pro and got all kinds of capability with it. I mean, it's you know, it's it's funny when you think about it. Our phones are more powerful than the computers we probably used when we were in college. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, but not everybody has access to that. So I think, I think that's a, you know, I think that's a good move. Um, you know, cause of course in, in places like China, they have, uh, what is it? Uh, is it we, we chat or something where everything is like in one app? Yeah. They use um, WeChat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and and it just doesn't seem like we in the U.S. are ever going to get to that point where we're comfortable with one app to do everything. Um, so that's why we're going to have thousands of apps on our phone. So I actually thought that at some point Facebook was actually working towards that model. Um, just a thought, but yeah. So well, but but I think do you wonder though with some of these latest uh, lawsuits that have been brought against them? similar to what happened to Microsoft back in the day with Internet Explorer. <clears throat> Do you think that uh, they're going to kind of force them to break some of their stuff up maybe? Um, I, I think it, it could happen. Here's the thing. I I was thinking they were going to roll, they were moving that direction because the whole thing was they want to, I don't want to say control, but they want um, they want to be able to do th a lot of things in your life. Um, like mm -hmm. So they want to have access to a lot of that. And one great way to do that is obviously to use the app because – for example, if you're not in the handset market, the only way to get in front of somebody is to have an app and to have all those different, you know, and, and have multiple apps. But then at the same time, you could potentially go into one app to do everything. So it's sort of building it into the handset, you know, because it's like, hey, it's like BYOD, bring your own device. And then Facebook would, you know, have be the primary player, I guess. Um, but pretty fascinating. So, um, but yeah, overall, uh, I think, I mean, I knew that light shut down a few months ago. It was earlier this year. And um, was it, let's see, I can't remember if it was, there's so much news. I can't remember if it was earlier this year or like it was uh, a few months ago, but it was recent that they shut down light. And so usually when they shut that down, what I always think a lot of times is they're just going to, you know, potentially uh, revamp it. They're going to, you know, maybe they're going to, they're going to take, so it's like a, like a piece of art, you know, like say you go to a museum and you see a nice piece of art. They don't leave that, artwork up all the time they take it down they replace it with some other exhibit they clean it they make sure that it's you know being maintained and things like that it's the same process facebook might take the right. instagram light app down because here's the thing it would not make sense for them to shut it down completely because they're they're ruling out all the people that are in developing countries or the people that just don't have you know really good internet and so by having the light app they're still able to offer that so i think this is a good move uh we'll see again i mean it's currently in India, but hopefully they'll be rolling it out here back in the States soon. Okay. Right. Topic number three for the year, Jim, what is this? Um, so let's go with, or you mean topic four, right? Or is we it just four? Did, oh, sorry, you're right. Yeah, four. <laughs> All right. Let, let's talk about uh, YouTube adding a shorts button, uh, at least starting in uh, India. But I think the plan is to roll that out to uh, some of the other uh parts of the world as as 2021 gets on yeah. um what is this what is what is this youtube shorts i mean like i know so, I've got... so yeah so so shorts right once again now we're we're trying to compete with reels we're trying to compete with tiktok with this short form vertical video content right not landscape video um and from what i hear the people that are that are jumping into us are getting a ton of views off of it if they if they set it up right and it stays on your YouTube channel. So it's a video on your channel just like all the others. Uh, but the problem so far had been it's hard to find it. So by adding this button, you know, now you're going to have a way to get, you know, in a sense straight to that ecosystem. Um, because YouTube is continuing. We, we've talked about it over the last uh, few months. They keep rolling new stuff out, right? This is a... Uh, you know, this is not a an area when we talk about all these platforms that you can just kind of sit back and say, huh, we're done. Everything's great, you know, because, you know, people are always wanting more. It, but it, it also, to me, goes back to this mindset of what type of content do you like to consume? Mm -hmm. Do you like the, you know, or is it 
or is it that some generations we won't name any specifically just it's a short attention span so this is the only way you're going to get them to watch something is if, if it's you know a minute or less and, and i can't even remember if a minute might be even too long on shorts but it, um <laughs> is, is it is it 30 seconds or i think it's even less it, than that, man. i think it's like 15 seconds potentially yeah yeah we'll have to we'll have to dig into that more but i know it, it, it but it goes back to um is that where you want to spend your time and energy um or would you rather get content i mean because the truth of the matter is on youtube unless it's changed when people go onto youtube their average i want to say consumption time is like 40 minutes so people are sticking around and they're watching stuff i, I mean you know, I've talked, we've talked before, like if you look at a lot of YouTube videos that, and of course some of these are established channels, but these are five to 10 minute videos. They're getting thousands of views, but that same video on Facebook, people, you know, are not hanging around. It's, it's, it's like this men mentality based on the platform. People go to YouTube because they're searching for answers. People right. go on Facebook because they want to just chill out catch up with you know friends and family maybe get a couple laughs uh and it could be the same person it's like we we look at these platforms differently but uh you know youtube has now got memberships they've got uh you know communities uh, i mean for people that are getting enough uh you know get getting to the right levels with their channels so i think i think this is something businesses need to pay attention to for sure um you know, and it's the second biggest search engine after Google. And oh, by the way, they're owned by Google. So, um, yeah, I, I think I think it's a good move to make it easier for people to find this stuff if that's what they want people to to actually use. Yeah. And, and, and I, here's the thing. I mean, I, I like the idea of of YouTube shorts. Um, I think the, I like the idea of YouTube actually moving into this as well, because it it works so well with YouTube, with the brand, with everything they're doing. Um, because a lot of people that are looking at YouTube, I mean, they're, like you said, they're going there for help for things. They know they're going for video though. That's the key thing to remember. They're not going mm -hmm. there for family up, you know, for example, they're not going there for family updates. They're not going there to see what kind of job somebody got. They're not going there to, um, to look at your holiday photos and things like that. And that's one thing where like YouTube has a very definite, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, Jim? Uh, they have a very definite purpose right. and facebook is a mix of all of that and then off of facebook you have instagram which is you know a little bit of a you know it's a little very a slight different uh variation of facebook you know and and so forth um so i i like the idea of youtube shorts i like the idea of of uh, making that short form content and because it's a view you know i think that that's going to ratchet up people's views um, I think well, that's a good it, it, yeah, and, and I think I think another point, right? This kind of goes back to what we we're talking about with Instagram. YouTube sees TikTok once again as a competitive threat to some of their traffic because some creators are going to leave YouTube and go to TikTok because oh, I can get all these views, and you know, of course, I, I know uh, at least yeah. I'm not. I don't know if you are either yet a, a big TikToker, but uh, you know, people will get a video that'll go viral on TikTok. I, I don't always know what that means. Does that mean that they get a check in the mail for $10,000? I doubt it. But uh, right. so I always, yeah. I always, you know, for me, tongue in cheek, when people talk about how many views they get, yes, some people are definitely getting business opportunities from going, you know, having something go, go viral, whatever, but you still have mm -hmm. to continue to produce content. And I think, uh, that to me is part of the challenge of this short form content is you've really got to plan it out. You've got to have a purpose behind it. Uh, you know, and I, you know, and I think, and, and then I think I read the other day that uh, there was some uh, TikTok, uh, you know, whatever it was uh, person that they lost a ton of viewers because of something they did that they didn't think through. I think they lost like a million viewer uh, followers because of something they did on TikTok, you know, that just, was I maybe maybe off brand? So it kind of goes back to you got to think about what you're doing, uh, just to get out there. Yeah, but the other thing you have to look at, you know, just from a, a from a short standpoint, is just the fact that there's a lot of work that goes into making videos. Yeah. So it's not just like, and I say, and I'm talking long form content here. 
there's a lot of work that goes into making videos. It, people are not just, um, what's from, what's we're only for Jim. So like, they're not just, uh, like recording. They're not just firing. So you know how, like, you know how you have people that tell you like, Oh, just push the damn button. And like, right. You know, they tell you to just, you know, do that and, and start talking and whatnot. But here's the thing. That's the wrong approach because here's the thing. It's a good approach to get you off that starting block, but there's a lot more out there you have to do. You know, all the videos, for example, that are successful, they're not just hitting that record button, or, you know, or hitting that go live button. They're doing a lot more than that um, behind the scenes. They've got a team, for example, that's doing their editing. They've got a team of writers, for example, you know, that right. are doing their writing for them. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. It's like somebody was talking about how, you know, Gary V does all this stuff, but he's also got 20 people that are yeah. following around and create, you know, he's not personally creating all this content all by himself. So you gotta, you gotta think about that when you look at some of these bigger, uh, you know, brands, you know, personalities that have all, it's like, they've got to the point where like, you know, if I want this to scale, I gotta have a team, whether it's virtual assistants, hiring people. So yeah, I mean, you know, and that to is your point, right there. That is yep. the secret sauce right there. The secret sauce is to outsource, you know, and I'm not saying outsource everything, but the secret sauce is to outsource what you're doing. Right. You know, it's to outsource it to, um, like first, you know, and, and I'll like, I'll just, I'll give you an example. So it's to outsource what you're doing. So let's say you're not a good, say you're a good writer, you know, and you want to get on camera, for example, but you're not a good video editor. You know, like, let's say you're a teacher and you want to teach English or something like that, right? Or you want to teach a language to somebody. You're not, on, not going on camera. So hire someone to do the camera part and the video editing part. If you got a, you know, if you have a kid at home, use that as well. Like, sorry, use them maybe. Maybe if they're interested in that, they might be able to help you. But, you know, outsource the part that you're not good at or the thing that will take you the most time. Because I hear this a lot, Jim. Like a lot of people, they get hung up on, Hey, I haven't done the video because I, you know, I haven't had the time to sit down and edit it. Well, outsource it to somebody who can do it so you can get it off your plate. Otherwise right. you're carrying that really heavy plate. And then the heavy, the more stuff you stack on it, the slower you get. Yeah. So, um, you know, and so that's just one thing. I mean, just something to think about if you're trying to grow your business and you're running into some of these challenges, like, Hey, what do I, what do I make for short content? For example, well, do I have a long form content to begin with? You know, start with the long form content and then what do I pull out of the long form content and make that into a short? Right. So lots of, uh, lots of things that people can, you know, work with. Okay. So, uh, we're, we got about 15 minutes left here, Jim. And so what I want to do, I want to do, uh, three quick things here. So the first thing is I want us to talk about, uh, this, this app called clubhouse that we okay. have, uh, you know, we, we'll talk about this for like, yeah, you know, just a couple minutes here. Um, so Clubhouse, it's a new app. And I don't say maybe it's not new. It's 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 new to a lot of people. It's been around for a few years. Um, but do you think it's you know, is this app a viable what what is Clubhouse, I guess, and then is it a social a viable social media platform? So here's how I look at Clubhouse right now. I at the moment, I'm a fan of Clubhouse. What I like about it is you you're go basically it's like walking into a live podcast. Or, okay. or a radio show from the old days and being able to become a part of the conversation. Um, the, the good thing in a sense is that it's not being recorded, uh, but it's allowing you to connect with people from all various you know things. I mean, I've made some new connections that I would not have made otherwise. And I say this because, you know, as an example, if you got, you know, you got a billion people on Instagram, you got 300 something million on Twitter. Uh, those people, if they're now on Clubhouse and they're coming into a room, now I can connect with them. So it makes you say, like, oh, maybe I need to pay a little bit more attention to my Instagram and my Twitter profiles. But you, uh, but you're able to have these great conversations. You know, you've got uh, some of the YouTube creators are creating these uh, what they call uh, rooms, so to speak, where people are having conversations like. How do you get your first thousand, uh, you know, followers? And, and so you got people that are really good at this, giving, you know, people that are struggling free advice. So it's it's truly a very uh, giving thing right now. But mm -hmm. then there's also, I will say, there's a lot of garbage rooms going on as well. So you got, you know, to me it goes back to you got to pick where you choose to spend your time. It's okay. very easy to get sucked into. Uh, I'll call it the clubhouse vortex. 
I, you know, I, I found myself getting uh, sucked in for six hours the other night and I was like, Ooh, I, I need to, I don't, I don't want to do that again. So, so you, you know, it's just like with social media, you got to give yourself some, uh, some uh, limits to not do it. So if you're an, and here's the other thing, it is an iOS only device uh, app at the moment. You have to get an invite. So there is a little bit of a FOMO, but, uh, but personally I, I'm a fan of it. I, I know I've seen some people that don't want to have anything to do with it. Here's where I see some potential. Okay. It, when it becomes available on Android, and the reason I say that is is because of this. As an example, after this show, if you wanted to have a clubhouse, uh, you know, conversation with the people that were watching the show, you could do that. You could say, "Hey guys, we're going to go to the, you know, the uh, social chatter, uh, you know, uh, you know, what do you want to call it? after after the show, and, and we're going to we're going to just chat for thirty minutes about some of the topics and hear what you guys thought because." Uh, not everybody could do that. Twitter chat, same way. You could now go have a conversation after the Twitter chat because the Twitter chat moves so fast yeah. that you don't always see everything that was said. So that that's where I see some potential benefits. But uh, you know, you know, like Brian Fanzo was in a group with him last night. I I don't disagree with him. Don't want to see them allow people to bring video into this. Don't want to allow them to do uh, direct messaging. Mm -hmm. Because I think that will ruin the experience. I think they've got it, you know, they've got something good. I get it. They're probably trying to figure out how do they monetize that. I think that's still to be seen. Yeah. Um, but, but it's, and, and it's, you know, so I do see some utility. I mean, you can also do private rooms. So if you wanted to have, uh, you know, so in a sense, it almost becomes like a conferencing app, right? Yeah. But I, but I do love the fact that I can, have it sitting next to my computer. I can be listening to people having a conversation and, and continue to do work. So that that's my my take on it. I, I know not everybody feels the same way. Uh, I mean, what are your thoughts? I, I think it's an interesting app. I mean, here's the thing. What you just described essentially was having a radio on your desk to be able to yeah. listen to it throughout the day without actually having a conversation with it. Or if you want to, um, being able to have the conversation. It's almost like a I'll say sort of eavesdropping sort of maybe like mm -hmm. sort of eavesdropping, but then you have the ability to hit a button and actually talk into the conversation. Uh, yeah. So I think it's interesting. I, I don't know if I actually see it coming to Android. You know, I, I it's already been out for a while. I, I don't know if they'll actually want to come to Android uh, again. I mean, it comes down to the user and a lot of people, they use iOS because iOS is where most of the users are at Android people for the most part, they're tinkerers. I mean, I love Android devices as well. Um, I do have, you know, I have both devices, but I'm primarily an iOS user. And that's just because I, I like the ecosystem. I like the way things work. I trust it a little bit more, you know, than I do the, the Android side. So I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's ever going to come to Android, even though they might say, Hey, we're working on it. Um, I've heard that too many times with software, you know, is it the next big thing? I mean, Twitter has been working on Twitter. What is it? Twitter spaces. Yeah, Twitter spaces. That's a good point. Yeah. You know, yeah, you, so, you know. it, yeah, I mean, I just think it kind of goes back to, I think that, you know, audio, I think audio will continue to grow, right? Whether it's oh, podcast, yeah. whether it's it's whatever, because there's still a lot of people. Here's the other, if you want to call it the benefit of Clubhouse, you know, mm -hmm. Judy Fox and I were chatting about this, you know, you don't have to be camera ready to get on Clubhouse. Right, right. Nope. Exactly. And, and, and some people still have that fear even with Zoom and everything else, or they're like, you know, I'd love to listen to this conversation, but I don't have the time to get somewhere where I'm, you know, can get on a camera. Right. Um, you know, it's kind of like when people are on a Zoom and they've got their their camera uh, off, you're kind of like, you know, what are these people doing? But with Clubhouse, it's not looked at, you know, it's like, okay, you can just sit in the audience and listen, or you can kind of raise your hand and say, hey, I'd like to you know, say a couple words or ask questions, uh, or, or you can start your own, uh, rooms and, uh, you know, start your own conversations. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's, here's the thing. I, I think it's a good idea. Um, I like the fact that it does lower the barrier to entry for people to join. Do I think it's new? No, not at all. You know, it's, it's only popular because, um, part of it, I think is like, I think people are kind of bored, you know, like, I mean, seriously, like you got people talking about it, like, I mean, we're talking about it only because 
like we've had people are we're in the marketing space so we've had people ask us about it but i don't really think it's new um yeah. i think that a lot of these people are bored you know they're bored in the sense that they want to try to find what they think is the next big thing but um i like the fact that it does lower their barrier to entry and um also going back to your point earlier we talked about instagram light uh, i like the fact that clubhouse is typically technically i guess you could say it's a very low uh it requires a low amount of data to use as opposed to video. And then it also is that big thing that you talked about, which is somebody being on camera and not being, you know, it's not necessarily about on camera confidence, not being ready to be on camera. Um, you know, zoom has the feature to be able to do, you know, you can do audio only there in Streamyard here. I can go to audio only for example, um, just by, you know, stopping. Oh, Christian, Christian will be back momentarily. I think he had a quick uh, camera issue. There he is. I was like, <laughs> yeah. So, but you can go into in StreamYard, for example, I can go into audio only mode as well. So, like that way, I don't have to be on camera. Um, so, I, I like the idea of Clubhouse. Um, again, I mean, the key thing I think to Jim's point, you know, you you made me laugh there when you uh, when you said, "Hey, I was on there for like six hours," and it's because when I started live streaming, it's the same thing. I started live streaming and what was the big thing? Like you had no direction. So um, that is something you're going to want to spend the time doing. You're going to want to spend the time uh, figuring out what you're going to talk about. Like you still have to do the planning. It's not just like, Hey, I hit right. the start and then you know, start a room and now I'm going to start talking. You have to be prepared right. with what you talk about. Otherwise yep. your conversation is going to go on for a long time. And you, know, you have to set the boundaries. You have to say, Hey, you know what? My boundaries are going to be what, you know, Oh, I'm going to be on for 45 minutes or I'm going to be on for, 15 minutes, you know, give yourself like time to create, but also some time to consume. Right. You know, but don't consume all the time. Cause if you're consuming all the time, then you're going to, you know, as people say like, Hey, it's a waste of time because if that's all you're doing, then you can't be growing as well. Um, yeah. So that's my thoughts on clubhouse, I, you know, I'm on clubhouse as well at Christian K. Uh, by the way, one other little point gem about clubhouse is, um, is that, when somebody does get invited, you do have to, you have to be mindful of this. So for example, if Jim sent me an invite to join, wink, wink, Jim, um, it will actually show that Jim is the one who invited me to join Clubhouse and it's going to always be there on your profile. I think that's actually a pretty cool thing. Um, you know, if you've got like, uh, you just have to be mindful. Like if you're going to invite yourself, for example, that's going to show that you invite yourself. Well, Hey, that might show that, well, Hey, this person doesn't have influence or whatever. So, um, uh, anything else you want to add about clubhouse, Jim? No, I, I just think, uh, it, it'll be interesting to see how it evolves over the next, um, six to 12 months. Yeah. And one other quick thing about clubhouse, uh, just be mindful when you go to download the clubhouse app, uh, there, there are actually a couple of different clubhouse apps. So right. I'm going to show, is what the one is that you want to actually look at. And so it, you might look at this and you might be like, well, what the, what the heck is this icon? So this is the Clubhouse app you want to download, um, the one with this uh, musician in it. So that's the one you want to actually go for. There's another one. It's It also comes up as Clubhouse as well because it's also named Clubhouse. Uh, but make sure you download the right one. The other one I think is like some kind of maybe project management app or something. So Right. So... Two last topics before we wrap up our 272nd episode of Social Chatter uh, spanned over quite a number of years here. I mean, um, you know, I, I started on Blab literally when the, the, the first day they rolled out. And, you know, it's something that's, you know, it's a, a labor of love, something that I, I continue to do every single week. Uh, we did take last week off. Uh, but again, that was also because it was Thanksgiving. But um, so Christmas let's talk. Eve. Or was it Christmas Eve? Sorry, hold on. Yeah, it all runs together. I know, like, right? Sorry. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for catching me on that one. So uh, that one's been mortalized on YouTube. Fantastic. Okay. So now we're going to talk about two tools we think can help you as a business uh, in a segment we like to call Tool Time. And uh, Jim, I want to have you start. What, what's the first tool we're going to talk about? Yeah, the, the, the first tool we're going to talk about is uh, Social Remix. And this is a, a tool from uh, Dustin Stout. And uh, it, it's pretty it's pretty interesting. Um you know, he, he's really helped come up with a way for you to, uh, you know, shorten the timeline of getting content out on your, you know, 
or taking a piece of content, let me rephrase that, and getting it out on multiple platforms, uh, but having it where it's each is like unique and not, uh, it's not like taking one post and just putting the same exact thing on every platform. So, so what do I do here? Like, what, what is this? So how, a, how much cost and what do I do? Well, I, I haven't used it myself. Um, I, I don't know if, that I saw what the, what the actual cost was, but I know you can, you can try it for free. Um, but, uh, you know, he's got, he's got a, a nice video here. I don't know if you want to show folks the video. I don't know if we'll um, maybe it'll be a better I, explanation. Really play the video, I guess. I'm going to just fast forward to a couple of different parts and just kind of walk yeah. through the way it works. Yeah. Okay. So you start off by creating a campaign. Okay. So, First thing is campaigns. And then as you can see on the screen here, you have various um, sections that you're filling out. So uh, for example, you know, you, you put in if there are any hashtags, for example, that you want to use and so forth. So you put your hashtags in, you do upload your images. And then what it will actually do as I fast forward through here is now, as you can see here, here, here are various messages for Facebook. And so I could have five different options for Facebook for this one piece of content. So it's basically remixing uh, the images that you, you, so you give them the images and the hashtags that you want to include and the, and some of the information. And then you can go in and you can create, for example, 15 tweets, one, uh, three Instagram messages, three Pinterest, five Pinterest messages. So you basically can get 30 pieces of content um, on using the social remix tool. And it, it is free for now. Um, again, it's in beta, so you do have to you know, maybe expect some bugs, but that's essentially what it does. So I, I think overall, from a user perspective, I mean, this is a, a, if I'm a business and I struggle with coming up with content to share, uh, for example, a lot of people, as you mentioned, they take the same message and they post it across all their networks. This will allow me to now put that, uh, put that information in there and create all those different social posts. Um, so I think that's a, a very useful tool. Um, especially, especially, especially if I am a business. So, um, I think the key thing is it's about saving you time and working smarter, not harder, you know, at what you're doing. I mean, you can put in the most work, but Hey, if somebody's, if, if it's just a social post, and as you mentioned all the time, Jim, if it only lives for a very short amount of time, why are you spending all the time creating, uh, all of, like you're like people spend hours crafting the perfect copy when it's only literally out there for a split second. So you just have to be right. mindful about that. And the tool will help you create 30 posts in about 60 seconds. So again, probably a little bit longer if you've never used it before, uh, but put in your content and then you can go in and you know break it out for each platform. Okay, so what's the second tool, Jim, for the week? Uh, the, the second one is interesting. It's called ClipChamp and it's a video editing tool. It's got a lot of features. It's got a free version. Um, you know, and of course, you know, there's a ton of video editing tools, but I will say what I don't like about the free version mm -hmm. is you only can do 480p. Okay. Yeah. That, that to me was a, was a turnoff, uh, to get it up to 1080, you're going to, you're going to have to get into the paid plans. Uh, so, I, so for me, I don't know, maybe you have a different thought that, that to me was, you know, even though it's got a lot of great features you're, you're going to have to go into a paid plan to really make it worthwhile. So I don't know, maybe trying it out, uh, you know, gives you some, but, but some things. So even with the, the creator plan at $9 a month, you're going to get 720 P exports yeah. and, and, and that's fine for things like Facebook, but, uh, you know, we got people now that want 1080 and, and 4k. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, uh, you know, you might want to look at some other stuff as well. I mean, there's that, that's the problem, right? You know, so I always joke with you, there's so many tools out there. Um, mm -hmm. it's sometimes really hard to tell what, uh, what does it, but it, but it does have some nice features. I think if you, uh, click on the, um, it might be under the creator under the tools, you can see it's got, yeah, right there. You got a video maker, you can do YouTube. And that's why when they say, well, you can do YouTube videos, uh, well, I, I'm not going to want to do it at 480p. Right. So that that's where I was like, um, yeah, it, it's got some nice stuff. It's got a library. But, uh, you know, I, I mean, unless there's a way, I, I don't think there's going to be a way that you can um, upgrade the, the, you know, 
the, the pixels, so to speak, um, or, or the, right. you know, what, once you've downloaded it at that lower resolution. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. The, the other features, though, that I, at least I think are also really uh, useful here. So back to your point, yes, you know, like the 480p, that's a non-starter, I mean, for the most part. Yep. Like, I'll use the free version. I'll see if I like it. But then I'm going to quickly want to either bump up to the creator or the business plan. And obviously, the business plan is the most popular because of the fact that it's got 1080p exports, uh, but it also has custom branding. So... You know, that's another big, big, big piece there. People are going to want that custom branding because they want to make that video with their logo on it. Um, right. So I don't think it's that big of a jump. But to your point, yeah, I mean, there's always tools out there to help you with the video editing aspect. Now, on the flip side, the parts that I really actually like are this. I like the compress and the convert option. Uh, obviously, I mean, the webcam and the screen recorder is also nice. So you could spend, if I were on a Mac and I were using a, a screen recorder, there are apps that are you know 100 120 dollars and it's not because it's a mac it's because it's a really good product but they're just for screen recording for example or webcam recording so this also has some features it's got the compressed feature and the convert feature so that if you need to you know instead of having to have multiple pieces of software you can use clipchamp to help you do that you can create your video you know you get a lot of stock editing options and then you can move it into compressing it properly for your platforms so that's something to also consider um, but yeah, to your point, Jim, I mean, the quality is the big thing. Um, again, I mean, if we're spending hundreds of dollars on a camera, we want to make sure that we're able to record, um, in the native resolution that we're using. So, but here's the thing. It's another tool, another tool in your toolbox. And I know Jim, we often, we have multiple iter multiple versions of a tool. We might use five different video apps for different things. You know, uh, we might have subscriptions to five apps. You know, find the one that works the best for you and use it versus sticking with something that is not actually helping you move the needle from a tool standpoint. So anything else you want to add, Jim? No, I think I just think, you know, just be aware that, you know, if you're going to use the free version, you're going to be at 480p and that's probably not going to serve you well. Uh, but, you know, maybe with the free trial, it lets you try some of the better features first. But uh yeah, I would I would say you got to at least go with the the creator plan, but even then, the 720 will work on Facebook, but uh, you know, you start looking at YouTube, you're probably going to want to do your stuff in at least 1080p. Yeah. Great points. Um, so anything else you want to add as far as this week's show? I mean, we talked about Twitter verification in 2021. I mean, it's coming. You know, make yeah, sure tomorrow. Yeah, well, it's not coming tomorrow, but 2021 will be here and <laughs> Just a few hours, right? And I know how many yeah. people can't wait to to put 2020 in their rearview mirror. But uh, but yeah, so yeah, I mean you've had you've had a crazy year. I mean I love even like I can see you're using the new uh, branding on mm -hmm. uh, that that Streamyards made available with I like theme, the, yeah. yeah the rounded the rounded theme. And I know even with the uh, sharing the uh, can can you show people real quick? Maybe share with the new uh, feature of con the comment share. I think there's like a way you can share it kind of rounded, like a bubble. I've seen a couple um, of people. Yeah, sure. Actually, here. So let me let me do some of the, I, I think you're talking about the banner. Or, hold on. Actually, yeah, you've got the comments. So let's find a comment here. Let's see. So let's see. Let's go back and find, uh, let's go to Chris's comment here. So he's talking about yeah. like my microphone. I mean, that just, that looks fantastic. I love the animation that we've added as well uh, on StreamYard. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to that, uh, there's also just a couple of quick little things here. So we've changed some of the themes recently. So you had, this was the theme we started out with throughout the right. year. Uh, we recently, and then there was also the minimal option, but as you can see, there's that nice little animation that comes in when people switch. Um, then we go into the block one also, and then we go into bubble and bubbles. What I actually, I like bubble. I got to say, uh -huh. I, I really do. I like this. It looks clean, looks fresh. Mm -hmm. Um, and then in addition to that, that does carry over, by the way. So for those of you who want to get the uh, the email newsletter, for example, just going to show you guys a couple of things here. So this is the ticker. Obviously, the ticker is just like it was before. Um, but then, for example, if you want to connect with Jem, for example, Jem, I'm going to just play a couple of these. So Jem now here has this fantastic uh, bubble look for the... Um, oh, for the banner. Banner, yeah. So we got that. And then in addition to that, I'm going to also play a couple of things here. So that's Jem. And then if you want to get the social, uh, the recap of this week's post, again, you can go to socialstuff.com slash SC272. So there's the 
bubble with the lower ticker. And then also, um, just wrapping things up, I guess. I mean, our show next week, we've got uh, Juliet Stapleton's going to kick things off. I think I got the, did I get the date right? I got the year right. Obviously. You did get the date right. Yes. Okay, yes. good. So we got her. She's going to be coming up, uh, coming on the show for 273. And that's on youtube.com slash social chefs or facebook.com slash social chefs. But um, I hope everybody has a fantastic new year and uh, a lot of uh, looking for a lot of uh, just great things for 2021. Uh, Jim, thanks again also for just co-hosting with me throughout the year. I mean, it's just been, uh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been fun, a lot of fun. And then also just our work with launcher live, um, and, and whatnot. So I'm, I'm really excited for what all's to come in 2021, but yep. Thanks Sounds a lot great. For watching and we'll yep. see you all. Yep. Next Happy new year, uh, everyone. We'll see you next year. Next year. Bye everyone.